Someday, I'll eat breakfast. I'll keep a job for more than three weeks. I'll have a boyfriend for more than ten days. In December of 2005, just weeks before her 16th birthday, my daughter Melissa began treatment for an eating disorder. But it's difficult not to think back a full year and a half earlier to May of 2004 when a gastroenterologist told us Melissa had an eating disorder and I didn't believe him. I said he was wrong and we did not return for a follow-up visit. We ignored symptom after symptom. Help raise awareness so the funding desperately needed for research and to train more specialists to treat this disease can be raised and so no other family has to endure the grief that we have. Thank you. Here's Melissa. and I wrote all words that describe Melissa around it. So it says special, colorful, daydreamer, goofy, curious, quirky, energetic, and unique. I know her passions were definitely, you know, acting and writing and performing, and she just always was putting on a show. It didn't matter if she lied to me. I was still gonna accept her as is. I do regret not talking to her the last few years she was alive. Like. I hope she knows that if she really ever did like want to talk to me about something specific or that she could come to me because I would talk to her. It's just that I didn't feel I could be as close with her with her problems. That was kind of when I first started to understand in whatever way I could what darkness she was living in. Even when it was diagnosed as bulimia, I still I didn't even understand. I didn't accept that it was really anything. A couple of different things happen. Parents bring it to the attention of their pediatrician and then people's prejudices about what looks normal gets in the way. So they're like, it's okay, lost a little bit of weight, come back in six months, um, don't worry about it. Uh, one of the most challenging problems in the treatment of people with eating disorders is they are often unsure about their commitment to get better. Parents are noticing. Parents are saying something's not right. Um, she lost a lot of weight. Her behavior's different. She's um, isolated from friends. Something's different. I believe we need to get every doctor in this country educated on what some early signs are and what some leading questions could be because I think we could help the parents sort this out. They can recover. Most women do recover. But one of the great obstacles to that is the lack of access to long-term care. An eating disorder is not about food, it's not about weight, it's not about exercise, it's about feelings that you have and you know different situations that you're not dealing with that you're using your eating disorder behaviors to, to cover with. The fact that I was pretty much generally unhappy um, and soft food is something I could really control in my life. And I also did feel like I was too fat. I don't obsess over any of it anymore. I mean, it was it controlled my entire day. You know, what I was gonna eat, what my body looked like. You know, it was been hours. I was completely resistant, horribly mad at my doctors that they just wanted to make me fat. These girls don't have anywhere to go. And they're still reading the same magazines and watching the same TV shows and dreaming the same stuff. I want to be that skinny and that rich and that famous. I always believed that, that she really would be somebody who could recover, even though looking back, I realized the odds were stacked against her because of the level of, of her illness, but, but I never lost hope. And I... You know, I still believe that that she could have beaten it. Someday, I'll love someone, travel wherever I want, I'll make my family proud, I'll make a movie that will change lives.